kwa kufikiria kwa kufikiria kuja na jambo la maana kabisa kushia na wanafunzi wa Zanzibar University. Yeye bila shaka anajieleza mwenyewe baadaye ni mtaalamu lakini ni program coordinator wa UN Volunteers program Tanzania nzima. Kwa hivyo nadhani ana mambo mengi ambayo tunapaswa kujifunza kutoka kwake. Napenda pia kushukuru fursa hii kumshukuru Dr. Muhammad Makame kwa utayari wake wa kuja kushirikiana nasi katika jambo hili bila shaka kwa kwake kuna uzito mkubwa napenda kuwashukuru wafunzi wote wa kuja jambo la msingi la kuambia ni kwamba hii function ina muhimu sana na muhimu sana ingawa wanafunzi bado wanaendelea tabia yenu ya kuona kwamba lectures public lectures public talks sio issue lakini ni issue kwa university hayo tutazungumza baadaye naomba niseme kwamba kwa muda huu wa saa moja tutakuwa na presentation ya kwanza ambayo tutakuwa na itawasilishwa na Dr. Mr. Mwamanga na baadaye tutafuatia presentation ya pili ya Mr. Obama pamoja na colleagues wake ndugu yanaye ningeomba wanafunzi tu watulivu tu wasikilivu tuwe na mkutano mmoja sote sote kabisa ili kwanza twende kwa haraka lakini tunemeke lakini ambacho kukuja ku kuhudhuria hapa having said that i am taking this opportunity now to welcome dvc assistant dvc mr dr muhammad makame to give a welcome remarks to our guests dr welcome for United Nations volunteer program in Tanzania will be discussing number of issues in particular an aspect of awareness of volunteer program in Tanzania and as much as I'm aware that uh, Zanzibar University the students of Zanzibar University are also part of United Nations youth This talk, I believe, will add a lot of value to them. And because you are the part of it, to have this kind of a person who shall have a talk with you shall provide a direct interaction and shall provide that level of interaction on which all whatever queries you have, you shall, uh, the, he shall be able to give you some insights. These types of programs too are very important. As most of multinational and international organizations today is running, they started at this particular stage. There were very few people who had a very big and wide mind to initiate what we call them today as international organizations, multinational organizations, corporations, and others. These are the ideas of a few people on which they started by themselves. And by looking at the demand, the initiations of these kinds of organization had taken place and now we are enjoying the existence of them. The program, I believe, shall provide with you a basic knowledge and skills on how you can interact with the others, volunteers, as in particular, this time around, Almost every nation is talking about uh, these issues. But I had also been informed that uh, other talk that we shall have is on the issues of oil and gas. Friends. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, dear 
Dr. Mohamed Makame, assistant to the uh, Deputy Vice Chancellor, academic. Uh, dear Mr. Hamis Juma, Dean of Students, and dear friends, colleagues, fellow students from Zanzibar University. Good morning once again. I'm very, very happy this morning to, to be part of you today. And this is my first time to visit Zanzibar University. And I hope we're going to have a, a very exciting moment to discuss about the United Nations Volunteer Program in Tanzania. My name is uh, Christian Mamanga. I'm the head of the United Nations Volunteer Program in Tanzania. In Swahili, we call it Mradi wa kujitolea wa moja mataifa. Mradi wa kujitolea wa moja mataifa. Whenever I stand in places like this, I don't feel very much comfortable. So you will excuse me, I'll keep moving around the hall so that we can get as close as possible and get to learn from your issues and questions that you might want to ask at the end of the session. Uh, today, the discussion or the topic will be about Mradi wa kujitolea wa umoja mataifa in Chini Tanzania and how uh, we can be part of it, how we can join the program immediately after finishing our studies. But also we are intending to use this platform uh, to send a message to all our colleagues, dear brothers, sisters, our relatives, uh, so that they can also utilize and make use of these opportunities that are available to work with the different and various United Nations uh, programs and uh, agencies that are operating in Tanzania. So, I'm going to use a very short period of time to take, through, to take you through a, a background, uh, a few highlights about a historical background, where we came from, uh, where we are, and what we expect in the future. But most importantly, I'll be taking you through uh, how our program works globally, including Tanzania, and how we can be part of the program, be it in Tanzania or outside uh, Tanzania. So let me take you through a historical background of the United Nations Volunteer Program. The United Nations Volunteer Program is a unique organization uh, and a unique program that was formed back in 1970s. Uh, uh, by the, United, uh, by the United Nations General Assembly. In December uh, 1970s, that's when it was formed. And this organization, uh, it has its own uh, headquarters based in Bonn, Germany, and uh, it operates in 146 countries globally, including Tanzania. And uh, this organization, in East and Southern Africa, it operates in about uh, 22 countries, including Tanzania. And uh, when it was formed back in 1970s, we were given uh, a key mandate of about three key missions. These three key missions were, one, we were given with the task by the United Nations to first of all uh, advocate for recognition of volunteer contribution in development programs. There are a lot of volunteer activities that are happening globally, uh, locally, uh, even in Tanzania itself. But you realize that most of these contributions are not recognized. So our main and principal uh, objective or mandate is actually to advocate for such contribution uh, of volunteers work into development and peace uh, activities globally. The mandate number two we were given with the task 
to basically help other UN organizations, all the UN organizations in the world, to integrate volunteerism into their daily businesses. So how do we do this? We were asked to help the programs, projects, and operations of the United Nations to basically acknowledge and integrate the work of volunteers into their mandate. And we have been doing that ever since. And then the mandate number two, I mean number three, which is the last one, is the task of mobilizing an increasing number of volunteers globally to serve as specialists, to serve as volunteers and experts uh, with different uh, UN organizations. So we are recruiting on behalf of other UN organizations. We are helping other UN organizations to make use of the United Nations volunteers. And no any other UN organization that was given uh, such responsibility by the UN General Assembly. We are the only one that we can do uh, for the rest of the UN organization. Those are the three uh, mandates that we were given uh, when this organization was formed. And Tanzania was one among the, the first countries in the world to accept this program and start implementing the program uh, since 1990s. And just to give you a bit of the statistics currently, uh, the recent data shows that uh, last year, 19, I mean 20, uh, 2018, we had more than 7,200 UN volunteers globally. This is such a big number uh, of volunteers. And these uh, volunteers were placed in serving in different countries. They were working in 146 uh, countries, including Tanzania. And uh, most of these uh, volunteers, almost 42%, uh, were women. We have women in this world today. So about 42% uh, were women. And 80% of the volunteers who served in the world were coming from the global south. So you realize that most of these volunteers were coming from the developing countries, 80%. So with the rest, about 20% were coming from the uh, developed countries. These volunteers who served in the world, including Tanzania, they served with 152 uh, uh, nationalities. So they were coming from different countries with different backgrounds. So these are the, are the, are the nations where uh, we managed to recruit and mobilize volunteers. In Tanzania, for example, we had uh, more than uh, 78 volunteers who served in Tanzania, including Zanzibar. So this gives you a bit of a highlight how many volunteers are currently serving or they have been actually serving in the past years about the, 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 the programs. The programs that the UN volunteers are supporting, most of these programs are actually implemented by the governments. Governments across the world, including Tanzania, are implementing these projects. And most of these projects and programs are basically are receiving technical assistance from the United Nations. And therefore, what we do as UN volunteer is to basically mobilize experts, uh, specialists in different areas, uh, to support the implementation process of these programs, projects, including operations of the United Nations uh, organization that are working currently in, in the country. Uh, also, uh, what I wanted to basically uh, let you know as we begin, it's good and very important to basically understand who are these volunteers. I know we have a number of definitions about volunteers. And we have currently so many volunteers are working. 
across the world, in the country, in the villages, in the regions, even in our streets where we are coming from. We have so many volunteers. And even here at the school, uh, perhaps we have different clubs that are working in different areas, maybe environmental uh, protection clubs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And all of these are volunteers. But who are these UN volunteers? The UN volunteers are basically professionals. And these are the graduates. These are educated professionals who are actually willing and are able to share and exchange their time, their ideas, their skills, their knowledge, and their experiences on voluntary basis. The UN volunteers are professionals who are willing to share and exchange their ideas, their skills, their knowledge, their work experience on voluntary basis. So this is a true definition of the UN volunteers. And uh, the UN volunteer program has a number of modalities. Some of us have already been uh, asking themselves, are we, can we ever be part of this uh, uh, workforce that are working as volunteers? If at all we are looking at those who have graduated with experience. The answer is that everyone and each one of us has a place, has a role to play as a UN volunteer. And we have all got an equal opportunity to compete and access the opportunities that are available and available to us. So we have about four different categories of uh, United Nations volunteers. First category, we call it international UN volunteers. International UN volunteer specialist. Let me add the word specialist. International UN volunteer specialist. Who are these ones? International UN volunteer specialists. Most of these guys are experts. First of all, they have graduated. They are either, either having maybe uh, one degree or masters or PhD, and they have almost more than five years experience uh, in the work environment, and they are willing to serve outside their countries. Let's say, for example, you are a Tanzanian and you want to work outside Tanzania, so you will qualify to be recruited under a modality called United Nations International UN Volunteer Specialist. That is just one category. The second category is the National UN Volunteer Specialist. These are nationals from their own countries who are willing to serve and offer their services within their own countries. Let's say we are, for example, Tanzanians, and we are willing to serve as UN volunteers in our own country. Therefore, we'll be able to serve as national UN volunteer specialists. But why are we saying specialist? It's because we request from you to have at least an experience, work experience, of about uh, not less than two years experience. So the minimum is two years experience and um, onwards. We have another category, component of the UN volunteer, uh, UN volunteers. And this is UN youth volunteers, of which I think majority of us, we all qualify to be run so immediately after our graduations. And with this group of the UN youth volunteers, we are looking at the age category from 18 years to 29 years. So if you are above 20, 29 years old, it means you overqualify, and therefore we want to recruit you uh, as a UN youth volunteer, but rather we shall recruit you as a, a, a specialist. Because yeah, first of all, we assume that a person with more than 30 years old would have at least an experience or working experience. We'll come back to that. I know you're already burning with a number of questions. Uh, at the end of this presentation, we'll have a session of uh, questions and answers. So this is one group. And in terms of experience, for these youth volunteer groups, uh, we are not focusing on experience. We are looking at 
basically uh, uh, about two years experience and not more than that. So it's between zero and two years experience, of which uh, perhaps in the next few years or the next few months, you will be qualified. That is another group. We have another modality that we are also implementing, and this one is called UN Youth University Volunteers. Can I see some smiles? <laughs> so we all qualify in this group and this category. Right now, even before you graduate tomorrow. And this is the most recent uh, modality that we have just uh, launched. It doesn't have more than five years old uh, since we, we, we launched this uh, category of uh, UN volunteers. And this came from a request of most mem UN member states and most countries. And given the demand from the young people across the world, uh, and also we are trying to respond to the call of most uh, recruiters and employers who are bas basically looking at the people or young people with experience. So as the UN, we said, okay, we need to prepare young people right from their universities before they, they, they graduate so that when they join the labor market, at least they will have the right attitude, skills, and the personality that will help them to get employment. So we help them to develop some employability skills. So with this group of uh, university uh, UN volunteers, uh, we are looking at the age of 18 uh, to, to, to 29 years old. And in terms of experience, we are looking at zero experience to two years experience. So it means if you have one day experience of uh, doing an intern or field work somewhere, you're already qualified and you can apply to work either within Tanzania or outside of Tanzania as international UN youth, uh, uh, youth university volunteer. And uh, in terms of uh, contract modality, uh, these university volunteers are able to serve for a minimum of three months uh, to a maximum of six months because we believe that these university volunteers, uh, first of all, uh, we have a number of criteria that we are looking at, uh, and one of one of these criteria is that this this young person must have been uh, registered in serving at a particular university, and must have a recommendation from the university where you are registered, and you must be either in the third year or the fourth year of your studies. And the experience that you're going to get within the United Nations, uh, uh, within the UN, because we attach these volunteers to UN organizations. So we believe that uh, this experience that you're going to get, it must contribute to your academic uh, references or academic qualifications. Those are the criteria. I think we shall go back to that particular aspect and discuss more when we open up for questions. I'm just now giving you tips and highlights on each of these uh, modalities that we are functioning or implementing. Uh, also, we have another category of uh, UN volunteers. This category works for those who are very busy they don't have time to serve on site, but they are still willing to volunteer with us, offer their knowledge, their expertise on different areas, uh, but they are willing to work remotely without necessarily being assigned to a particular uh, duty station. So this is critical. We recruit you and we recognize you. Maybe for some reasons, maybe family reason, you cannot relocate yourself from Zanzibar to Kenya or to Nairobi or to any other country. Or maybe you cannot resign from your workplace that you are currently serving, uh, but still you are interested to serve as a UN volunteer on a voluntary basis. Therefore, uh, you have a space to serve with us, uh, but what you need to do is actually you need to apply to serve as a UN volunteer. We shall recognize you as a UN volunteer and we shall keep giving you assignments 
from different UN organizations and will be able to deliver those tasks and responsibilities remotely using uh, your internet. So you must have an internet. For example, we might ask you maybe uh, to design uh, a page. You know, if you're a graphics designer, you are requested to draft maybe a page of uh, uh, a particular report, maybe from UNICEF or UNDP. They are looking at a graphics designer to design a cover for their reports. Or maybe we have done a survey uh, or a particular UN organization uh, implemented a particular survey or research and they need uh, a data analyst to help them interpret uh, the data and analyze the data. Therefore, we shall go and make use of our own online volunteers who are experts in that area. So it really depends on the nature of assignments or requests that we receive from different UN organizations globally. And therefore, you don't have to serve for Tanzania only. You can be here based in Zanzibar, but you are serving uh, a particular UN organization which is based in, uh, in Iraq or, or Liberia or Nigeria or in any other country around the world. Uh, let me just finish uh, with two last points. In which sectors are these volunteers working? We work in a number of sectors, in all sectors regardless of our specialization, ranging from uh, agriculture, uh, health, education, vocational training, poverty, energy, environment, uh, human rights, gender, uh, youth affairs, community service, etc., etc., etc. We have more than 151 uh, database of professional categories that we are looking at. So everyone has a space. It is a first or second meeting. To say that a person has to be in private work for this. As an international volunteer and other program, you say that you are assigned work outside of the country or research of the country. So my question is, as a person has a choice, or a member of the UN volunteer program has the choice to either reject or accept the assignment that is assigned for him to perform. That's what I'm about the finance. So now I'm going to make a that. I'm going to go to the first one, but I'm going to go to the first one, and I'm going to go to the first one, and I'm going